And clearly, as you can make out from all of those reports, there are few places where the India story is playing out better than in West Asia and specifically in the Gulf. And this week marked victories for India on the international stage very significantly from that region. One of the biggest stories of the week, Qatar. Qatar releasing eight jailed veterans of the Indian Navy. The retired defense personnel who worked with a private company had been arrested in August last year for allegedly spying on a submarine program. They were handed the death sentence in October, which was later commuted on appeal by their families. After months of relentless negotiations being led by the Ministry of External Affairs, by the National Security Advisor and personally uh, overseen by the Prime Minister himself, those veterans returned home scot-free. India essentially got a country like Qatar with very stringent penal provisions to release eight people, eight people convicted of espionage and sentenced to death. Now, we don't quite know what happened behind those closed doors, but what's been achieved is no mean feat. India is sending a clear message to its citizens that the country is capable and willing to protect them wherever they are, whatever the circumstances. And just days after those veterans' release, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, was in Qatar, thanking the Emir personally for that, and of course, discussing India-Qatar relations more broadly. And that was, that was the second part of a very successful trip to the Gulf being made by Prime Minister Modi. Just before that, he was in Abu Dhabi to inaugurate the first ever major Hindu temple in the Emirates. This traditional stone temple has been built on a 27-acre campus gifted by the UAE government. The Prime Minister had laid the foundation for the temple in 2018. You'll remember we'd spoken about it extensively on the India story in the month of January. We'd spoken about how this is a landmark development, not just for India-UAE ties, but also for the UAE itself. Here is an Islamic monarchy ruled largely under Sharia law, seeking a secular makeover, reaching out to the sizable Indian diaspora settled within its borders. Perhaps another feather, of course, for India's rather firm foreign policy with its non-partisan stance on the Russia-Ukraine war, a refusal to back down in the row with Canada, demand for a due representation at the United Nations. India is sending a strong signal. It's putting its national interests first. And the more it does so, and the more it sends that message that Indian citizens will be protected, the more the impact that we will see in country after country. And what's happened with Qatar in particular is particularly noteworthy and that's why it's great now to be joined by Mr. K.P. Fabian who's the former ambassador of Qatar. Ambassador Fabian, you know Qatar better than just about anybody else. How was this achieved? How did this happen? How were they from death sentence to commuting to being released and coming home? How was this achieved? Well, let me put it this way. It is uh, we all rejoice along with the families uh, but at the same time, we should try to understand what has really happened. Now, both of us said we are very, very happy that our people are back. But let us also understand the Amir of Qatar was also finding himself in a difficult situation, in a catch-22 situation, because if there is a court verdict that these eight people have conspired against the national security of the state of Qatar and then India seeks the royal pardon, the Amir will find it very difficult to say no to India. Yeah, because Qatar attaches the highest importance. All right, so let us try and understand what could have been happening behind the scene now. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of personal intervention there from the Prime Minister. He was directly involved in many ways. He was there right now uh, thanking the Emir. But other potential straws in the wind that, you know, may have happened behind the scene. Of course, there, there was a, a certain change in, in India's voting pattern when it comes to Israel. Uh, that's been happening after the death sentence. Uh, maybe that could have played a factor. Only a matter of speculation, of course. Gas deal was also done. So could those be other levers that were perhaps being pressed behind the scenes? Uh, I'll put it this way. Uh, 
India played it very sort of uh, adroitly. Mm. You know, I, when we are negotiating, you and me, yeah. I may have some points to sort of put pressure on you, but mm. it can be done in a subtle, soft way or in a crude, forceful way. Mm. Now, India did it in a subtle, soft way. And yeah. that is important for us to recognize. And as I said earlier, the young Amir would never have, I repeat, would never have ordered the execution of eight Indians. Yeah. It is absolutely out of the question. You see, even if they had actually really compromised national security of Qatar, because he's 43, I think, he mm. could have never done it. You see? Ambassador Fabian, I think that's exactly the factor that I'd also like to underline. That whatever the specific teams are gassing or anything else, the one major overriding factor which you have to give the government full credit for is the recognition that West Asia is critical for India. The Gulf states are critical for India. And that's why the massive outreach that has been made, not just to Qatar, but to the UAE, to Saudi Arabia, to that entire region over the last few years, is this when we start seeing the fruits of that starting to be to be reaped by India? Because they are also recognizing how important India is for them, how important the relationship is. And once that strategic partnership starts to get built, that's when you can get around things that would have potentially been speed breakers or speed bumps sometime in the past. Is that a good way of looking at it? Is that the broader strategic perspective that underlines all of this? Well, that's correct. But I just want to make one point. You, uh, we both spoke about uh, the meeting between uh, the Amir and our Prime Minister in, during the COP28. Now, that was in Dubai in November, December. Now, very technically, it was a corridor conversation. Yeah. Because neither side had asked for a proper meeting. Mm. Okay. Now, my view is that, and I had expressed this earlier also, that at the time of G20, was it in September? Yeah. India should have invited the whole GCC because it is the privilege of the host nation to invite others. Instead, Saudi Arabia, of course, is a member, so it did not need any special invitation. If I get it right, only UAE came. Instead of that, I had then said that we should have invited all of them. Then the Amir of Qatar would have come to Delhi <laughs> because if others are coming, he will also come. Incidentally, just to get it right, you know, it is not to sort of, you know, make any criticism of anyone or anything. When our vice president was there, that was a little before the Doha games and all that, I can't mm -hmm. remember the month. Qatar showed its displeasure over certain remarks made by a certain spokesperson of a certain party. You remember that? Yes, and India had reacted very fast to that. I mean, she was the spokesperson of the ruling party, but, you know, taken off television and chastised. India sort of very clearly made that as a gesture towards Qatar, which was one of the first countries to react in a very, very strong manner. So India took care of Qatar's sensitivities, and now, in a sense, Qatar is saying, we understand your sensitivities. Is, is that what's happening? No, quite right. But at that time, we had correctly sent out an invitation for Amir to pay a state visit to India. Mm. And, well, the response from the Qatar side was good. So last question, Ambassador Fabian, Prime Minister Modi now meeting uh, uh, the Emir of, of Qatar, saying thank you to him. It's clearly an enhanced relationship, going along with the enhanced relationship that we are seeing with the UAE. All of this, of course, something which Indians should be very happy about. Also, a great personal boost for Prime Minister Modi uh, at a time when the elections are uh, around the corner. But, but at a broader level, do you think Qatar, one of those countries with which India should build long-term strategic relations, you know it so well? I believe so. But uh, you will remember that uh, our naval attaché had left Qatar the day these people were detained. Mm. And to my knowledge, he has not yet gone back. So I would say that our defense cooperation can start only when the naval attaché or any other defense attaché returns.